Hello, I'm Kathy Bissell. Welcome to the Golf Show 2.0. And as you can see, I'm dressed in someone's favorite color. Gary, can you guess who's? Obviously, Bucky Badger coming no. out that devastating loss to the hated Iowa Hawkeyes last weekend. No. Uh, I'm in a green shirt. You're in red, so it probably means... Uh, it must be Christmas? No, that's not it. I you're at the Masters? Uh, something red at the Masters. Yeah, I'm Jim Nance and you're uh, Kurt Schilling. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, let's go with Tiger Woods. It's not Sunday, let's... but red's always good. That's what we're here <laughs> to discuss this week, uh, starting off with, along with some other news topics. Tiger Woods is coming back, and we're going to see him play possibly as many as three times in December. <laughs> the first is the in the, in the mat. Uh, I'm sorry. The first is in the Hero World Challenge in the Bahamas, December one to four. The second is the match. He's paired with Rory McIlroy, and they're playing Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas on December 10th, and then. Probably he's going to play with his son, Charlie Woods, in the PNC Championship, the father-son challenge where Charlie stole the show last year. I would think of that. I would think the PNC Championship probably is Tiger's, Tiger's new favorite major championship. But I, I, I think, think so, too. Yeah, I, I bet he does, too. I well, remember we had a friend who used to say whatever tournament he was going to next that Tiger was playing. That was the next major. It didn't make any difference what tournament it was. If Tiger was in it, that was a major. So I think we can say that the PNC is Tiger's next major. Yep. Well, he's got two more before that, but yes. So uh, this is actually, even though they're all three silly season events, and honest to God, they should have retired the match after having those quarterbacks <laughs> play in June. It was just atrocious. I couldn't but watch Tigers, that. Tigers back in it, so can't hardly go wrong with that, except they're playing it at night in Florida under the lights, which is a bad look. And they're playing, uh, you know, the traditional round of 12 holes. I know that just, that bowls me over. There's a golf course here down the street that converted 18 holes to 12 because they wanted to take some land for real estate development. And I just can't believe anybody said yes to that. I mean, you you can't get a handicap for 12 holes. So yeah, I wish him luck with that. Yep. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Nobody wants to go. Nobody wants to go bowl seven frames. <laughs> well, you score doesn't matter. But the good thing about that is the 12 hole thing. Uh, this will give Tiger his first realistic ch realistic chance to shoot his age in competition. <laughs> 46 is the magic number. He won't be 47 <laughs> until December 30th. So and, and do they get carts? In the do match, they, get to, they, they, get to, they, yeah. they invented the cart cam, which was a lot of actually a lot of fun during the match. That most yes. of the rest of the show wasn't as great, but the cart cam was fun when they did that. When the when they had golfers playing and not right. other athletes. Um, yeah. But it's a uh, this is a big month for Tiger Woods because it's we're huge. going to find out where he is because he's the mystery man. He's about more reclusive than Howard Hughes and probably <laughs> just about as big, a, big of a germaphobe. No, I, I just kidding about that. <laughs> just kidding about that. Our yeah. interest is peaked because a month or so ago, Nota Begay, his good buddy, TV guy, started playing on senior tour and he was asked about Tiger and he said, oh, I think Tiger can still squeeze out a win somewhere. So, is that Noda just being a good guy supporting his college buddy, or does he know something? Is he practices with Tiger, well, or we we don't know? I, I think that's what we're going to find out here. Well, I asked him about it at the Jim Furyk tournament. Uh, it was a week or two after he had said that the first time, and he just said there wasn't anybody more competitive than Tiger, and that Tiger had not lost his swing, and so he didn't see why Tiger didn't get. and. I mean, that was news as far as I'm concerned. That's what Noda, Noda has seen his swing since they've been in college. So he knows Tiger. I hope he's, well, he's right. He's a positive that guy. Would be exciting. So I'm thinking he's just, 
he didn't like, well, I played with him and he shot 64 kind of a story, but I'll give right. him the benefit of the doubt. Right. But look, uh, Tiger's going to play three times and we're going to, this, this could go, we're going to find in a month, uh, in, in a month, possibly we're going to find out one of three or four things is one option is he comes back. He plays really well. And we go, he can still win. Right. You know, he, and before last year was an aberration. He came back, he rushed to come back too soon to play the masters. He needed more time. Yes. Option two is he comes back and plays better than he did this year in those nine rounds where he shot 34 over right. and we go, Oh, he's, he's gotten him better. He's improving. Maybe he can still keep getting better and, and be competitive. Three is he plays about like he did this year and it's not great. He can play that would but hurt. He can do it more than two days in a row. And then option four is he's not as good. And it's time to think about doing something else for a living like TV or just do endorsements or I don't know, host a game show like Peyton Manning. Well, they are doing that uh, TV show uh, of uh, the team, team team thing he's doing. Um, I forgot the, the tomorrow. Oh, league, tomorrow's whatever sports. It is. Uh, yeah, yeah. they're Monday night, Monday night Monday golf night golf TV league. show. Right. The Monday night yeah, golf yeah, that, thing. That sounds pretty cool. I, I'm a big fan of simulator golf. The putting isn't very good, but this is simulator golf on the next level. It's kind of a combination. Oh, yeah. They've got these guys pl hitting into a big, I what I understand, a big jumbotron size screen. So the simulation is going to look yeah. great. And they're going to have stands out around it. And then and it's going right. to be outdoors, obviously. And they're going to have like 75 yards of golf hole where these guys will actually hit like a wedge shot to a real green and they will putt on a real green, which is stuff. That's where simulator golf kind of. Right. This is putting. Uh, there are some, they have some brushes, some mats that really simulate bunkers pretty well. Shockingly, shockingly good, but the putting really is not, not all that great. So that's a show that could really not only take off, but, it could really light a fire under simulator golf in the U S because Americans oh, yeah. know about it. Simulator playing simulator is really fun. You can play famous instead of just going, uh, I'm lucky in Pittsburgh. We've got the world's largest indoor, uh, golf dome in North America. As far as I know, it's a hundred yards across. I love hitting balls there, but you know, it's not the same. You, you can't, you know, it, Playing simulator golf, you're hitting shots and you're trying to score. And that's that's okay. a little more fun. It's also a lot more expensive than hitting balls in a dome, but uh there's a lot to be said for simulator golf and it could it could this could be what kick starts it in the US. If oh, they I would I, I'd well, like to take what, what do you of the of the four options I laid out, which one do you think is most likely? I think he comes back a little bit better than the last time we saw him. I don't know how much better, but I think with that extra time that he's had, we're going to find out whether improvement's possible. And I think having a chance to play with a cart, which he'll be able to do at the, the match, and he'll be able to do at the, the PNC, which I still call the father-son, but yeah, he hasn't definitely announced that he's in that, but I'm sure it's a yeah. You know, if he can't. Oh, play he's on. there's no way there's no way he's not playing with Charlie. I mean, there's just no way he's he's going to pass on that. So I think you know we're, he can handle playing. He can handle playing the the golf. We've seen that, and his good friend Noda has said recently that his game is his ability to hit shots has not diminished. It, we all know it's just the walking. And he doesn't really have to walk at New Albany uh, for the Hero World Challenge unless he wants to. You know, his good friend Casey Martin went to court uh, accidentally helping out Tiger Woods. Went all the way to the Supreme Court and the PGA Tour has to give him a card if he wants one. I don't think they'll ask for one, but he they would have to. Who thought Tiger Woods was ever going to need a cart to play golf? <laughs> you never know what's going around the next corner. Daily, you could figure he might hurt his back with that swing someday, and the way he takes care of himself. But Tiger Woods was Mr. Athlete, so yeah, life is highly unlikely. You know what's going to happen? Absolutely. 
<laughs> and it's going to be interesting to see when you mentioned the uh, the TV thing in the middle of all that. I was wondering, would he want to go and, and be the next guy on NBC? Would they move Paul Azinger for him? I, I mean, Paul is so good that it would be a shame if, if he wasn't on the air all the time. But uh, they've got two openings at, at NBC. One of them you have to walk and the other one you get to sit down. Uh, yeah, just, well, what do you think about Tiger on TV as an announcer? Well, Tiger's Tiger's going to you know have the Azinger attitude. Azinger didn't want a job, just any job. He if he's if he wasn't going to be the main guy, he wasn't interested. Got it. So okay. Tiger Woods, you can't have him sitting out on sixteen. Tiger's no. going to be in eight. You know, in the now, if you had Tiger and Azinger together, they could have more That'd fun be than good. Than Azinger back in the day, and they were and they worked well because they weren't that friendly at the time and they were always trying to top each other, not work each other. And it was a real competition <laughs> to say clever things and, it, and viewers loved it. And it came off great. So yeah. that can really work, but you know, you're asking NBC to take on a lot of money to cover that. And then NBC or CBS just promoted Trevor Immelman to the, yes. into the tower. And you're going to put Trevor Immelman in the booth with Tiger Woods at the masters. I mean, if, if Tiger, could be the guy in the booth with Jim Nance at the Masters. Maybe he'd be interested in that. I have no idea, but I don't think he'd be interested in in sharing the booth in a, you know in Augusta with with anyone. But I I don't know why does Tiger want to continue traveling? To I can't see him doing anything other than majors. I, I don't see him driving in. You I know, don't either. Helicoptering just... over to do the Valspar Championship for NBC or any of their other. Or even the, you know, maybe maybe the Arnold Palmer Invitational, just because it's it's Bay Hill. But uh, the Honda, I, I just don't see him doing regular tour stops or a World Golf Championship. Maybe you know, maybe Riviera, one of the tournaments he hosts. Or, uh, but I, I don't. He's not. I don't see. I mean, I, but you know, I can't speak for Tiger Woods. I try not to. We can only speculate. But <laughs> he, he's the, got. The thing got, is. Uh, He's, he's they, the money they miss need the yeah, they, travel. They, they they miss the guys. That's the thing. That's the only thing that brings them back to the Champions Tour is they miss their buddies. And so whether they were well, that good of friends with their buddies or not, and but of course Tiger was never as close to people as as other golfers. Have yeah, he been. wasn't close to people at all. I think that's why he likes the Presidents Cup and the Ryder Cup so much is because yes. all of a sudden he went there and became part of it and. Yeah. He actually developed friendships with these guys he'd always kept at arm's length. And he was like, uh, you know, I'd say his second family. But when he first discovered it, it was more like his first family. He was uh, excited. Well, and he was, I think, I think he was shocked that so many players called or came over or, yeah. you know, found a way to reach out to him when he, when he was in a hospital bed and then was rehabilitating at home. I think that meant an awful lot to him. And I think he was even surprised at how much it meant to him. So, so uh, who knows what he'll do next? He doesn't you need the money. Uh, and no. tra- you know, flying around the country is not good for his back. So no. why, why does he want to do that if he's not, you know, he, he's going to do stuff. That would be a good reason. Golf stuff. He can do stuff that he's going to film in his backyard. Well, that's why this uh, – a 12 hole tournament and the tomorrow golf with the, uh, the, the, what do you call them? The simulators. Yes. That's a, yes. that's a great way for him to do it. Maybe I mean, the Masters to say, will go to the 12 hole round to accommodate. I don't, I don't think I might predict happen. that next week. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, well, it'd be wrong, but, but, but I, ending it, ending it on 12 would be an interesting way <laughs> to take care of it. <laughs> Think about right, that. Well, Andy. We were talking about seniors there a minute ago. You're the queen of the power performance ranking, the only legitimate senior tour rankings that no one else does. And somehow the PG tour has declined to acknowledge your rankings. We just finished somehow. the Schwab Cup. Uh, Stephen Alker, greatest player in history, dominated. And <laughs> he finished third in the final event. He didn't win it, but he won the Schwab Cup going away. And Padre Carrington shot 11-7 under and yeah, crushed him during the final event. But Stephen Alker is the king of the hill in senior golf, which uh, nobody but saw not that. According, 
Not a, no, nobody saw that coming, but not according to my rankings. Steve Stricker is still the right. king of PGA well, they both, Tour they both Champions won, Golf. They both won four times this year, so they yes. really were neck and neck. And well, Steve, but Stricker did that in like five months. Yeah. Because he didn't play until May. So he played, what, May, June, July, August, September, and a couple weeks in October, and then he went to the tree to shoot deer. And I haven't well, seen yeah, or heard whether or not. The, if you go to the Power Performance Rankings website, you can see in the fall, small print there are points awarded for the number of deer you no. shoot. <laughs> and depending there are on, no deer. Depending on whether you stalk them. <laughs> down and shot them or hit in a blind and shot them, determine how many points you got. So Steve uh, stayed ahead of him because of his hunting prowess. Well, that was probably it. My brother would be happy about that because uh, he gets nervous driving at night after hitting a deer coming back from St. Louis one time. And he just, wait, he, says, he, only, gets getting off the he only gets nervous after hitting a deer or <laughs> after hitting a deer comma, he is now nervous driving at night. After hitting a deer comma, he is nervous okay. driving at night. They will leap out at you when you least expect it. They're stealthy well, let's creatures. Well, move on to a couple other things quickly because uh, I notice your microphone's starting to get a little crackly. So your okay. battery's maybe dying. Um, Tony Finau, he was one. He, oh. he was he was one for 185 in his career winning, and now he's won four of his last 30. He's got his putting. I mean. He, he fixed his putting that, and that, that went through his whole game, but he might, he might challenge for number one in the world now, possibly. What do you think? Well, he might, I mean, Office, some of the, Houston. some of the tournaments he won, no offense to the people in them, were not the strongest fields, but every, every week you beat whoever shows up and you win that tournament based on your play. So, He's won four tournaments. Scotty Scheffler won four tournaments. I think Rory McIlroy, did he win four tournaments? And somebody else won four. Uh, so, yes. Yeah. I, but we're supposed to do research before we go on the air. Rory won, <laughs> I know he won, can't, he had won three, I think. Seemed like he won six, but he didn't. Well, I think I saw a graphic of that. It was probably exaggerated over the, it was probably an extended period of time. But he's, he's, he's won a lot. Let's just put it at that. And so, you know, maybe, you know how it is with people who play Ryder Cup and President's Cup, if they're successful in their pairings and successful in their singles matches, it kind of turns the switch in their game after that. And they tend to, to either win if they haven't or win more if they've won before. And so I would attribute that to his team play. So I think it, that's an it, extra it's a benefit validation of it. that he belongs with the best players in the world. But I think yes. in Tony's case, he did something. He improved his putting, especially his short putting, because that's where he was losing his strokes. And he really well, that's is it, solid then. with the putter now, and that's a difference maker. And again, once you're confident with the put, once you're not worried about missing a three footer, you hit it better, you chip it better. You're the, yes, you're you're playing stress free golf. So. Yes. I'm not saying he's going to make it to number one, but a guy wins four times in the last 30 events. You got to take him seriously. I don't care where they are. Yep. I it's, agree uh, with you. Let's just Latin, Latin PGA Tour Latin America. Uh, yeah. And even then, it's pretty <laughs> Absolutely. good. Absolutely. It is. They have to beat some that, people. Travel that tour is impressive. Okay. Oh, here's yeah. a, let's briefly touch on the LPGA player, uh, Lynn Grant. From Sweden, yes. young player. She qualified for this week's CME Group Tour Championship, but she can't get in the country because she's not vaccinated for COVID. Right, which, and we don't know why. And, and, we don't uh, know why she elected not. This player couldn't get in either. So, right. Why, why are we still? Why are we still doing that? I don't know. Um, let's get Fau Let's have Fauci on next week. Oh, please. <laughs> that's not, but you know, she may have some reason that either she may be allergic to the vaccine. Some people are, they, they have egg bases and some of them, yeah, and there's, some people there's are a lot allergic of reasons to eggs to not, and, to not be not, inoculated. And, and, she, and she did not say what her reason was. And some people just had a bad reaction to the COVID vaccine and she may be afraid of that 
or somebody no, in her family may have had. You already hear there's no laws on if you're vaccinated or not. So no, if somebody. What did you say? You wrote about well, she, about she, that. She, 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 should she should have just should. flown to Mexico and carried her clubs right. across the Rio Grande and walked in with the rest <laughs> of the immigrants. None That's of whom right. Are required to be vaccinated or are even tested to see whether. They could be carrying I think black that's, plague in. We don't test them for any. That's okay. She should have just done that. She should have done that. I agree with you. That's the way to come in. Her clubs would have been a little damp, but, you know, she probably could have. If she just come in from the south, I'm sure her manufacturers would have sent her some clubs to El Paso or. Yeah, they, they could have sent her clubs to her and she could have just uh, yeah. waited across and, uh, you know, learned a few, few words in. Words in uh, Spanish. <laughs> but what? I don't look Mexican? I know. <laughs> a blonde right, Swedish last, lady. Last item here. It's the end of an era, sort of. Uh, NBC is not renewing Roger Maltby and Gary Cope, two long-time yeah. war horses. They've been there. Uh, Roger's been there 30 years. Cope's been there full-time 25 years. And they both, you know, are team players and they're not out there to be the show themselves, which was good because with Johnny Miller there, they weren't ever going to do that. But neither one yeah. of those guys on occasion wasn't was afraid to say, not so fast, Johnny. I mean, they had they were forced into saying a lot of that's exactly right, Johnny, because Johnny asked them a lot of yes or no questions and he was right a lot. But on the occasion of Rose, those guys were happy to politely disagree with Johnny. And they yes, were just they pleasant yes. places there for a lot. They're Anybody who's watched golf, they're part of your golf memory, just as Ken Venturi was before them. And when you watch well, golf, and, uh, you thought uh, Gary had that had that better than most putt that we're going to continue to see forever and ever and ever. And I'm trying to remember if Roger had a famous line during all of his walking, but um, you know, he did a good job. He, he was think, out yeah, there slogging through. Yeah, his was the... involving something with a martini. I don't recall. <laughs> His great moment as a player was he won the, I think he got his first win at Pleasant Valley Classic up in uh, Worcester, Mass. And uh, lost the check during the bar celebration. Oh. So, uh, well, I, think the I, I saw him win the uh, Memorial Tournament in the playoff with Hale Irwin, the first one. Uh I think that's what who it was in the playoff with Hale Irwin. And then also the World Series of Golf in Akron, which gave him a 10-year exemption at the time. And I yep. think he needed it because I think he had some injuries. Well, the other great moment, well, Roger had some interesting playing moments, but one was, and I'm sorry I didn't look it up because I didn't know we were going to talk about him, but the 87 Masters that Larry Mize won. Yeah. I think Roger Maltby might have been the 54-hole leader in the Masters. Really? Okay. He might have been in the last group Sunday. And well, that's uh, something for us to not, reason. Maybe he was a, maybe he was a leader after 36 holes. But anyways, he comes off as a guy who you know likes to have a cocktail and he's a comedian, very lively personality. But fact is he was a pretty good player, and, and so was Gary Coke. Yeah. He, you know, Gary Coke is a good player and he had some senior tour moments versus just regular senior moments that we all <laughs> But both those guys were um, we're, we're, we're just used to them, and it, it won't quite be the same hearing somebody else know. I mean, they, NBC yeah. said they really want to freshen up the broadcast. Well, I don't, I don't even want to imagine what kind of – what that means. It probably doesn't sound good. It sounds like – Sounds like air I, freshener. I don't – yeah, let's bring in three 19-year-old kids. Oh, I hope not. To attract the young viewers. But uh, I, th I would say – and I'm stealing this out of the story I wrote for SI.com. Uh, you know, how would you assess these two guys' careers as broadcasters? And I'd, I'd say better than most. Better than most. I agree with you.